and leading the field away is Hanu Mikula, winner last year and chasing a Lombard REC rally hat-trick of victories. The first test in Longleat Safari Park. Conditions are surprisingly good, which tends to make these opening spectator stages rather less of a trial than usual. But, as ever, there are always one or two with problems, both minor and major. Bartonen rounds the Lions cage successfully. And Britain's Russell Brooks in his Vauxhall Chevette is off to a determined start. He's just overtaken a six-sounding Group A Opel Manta, driven by Belgian champion Marc Duez, who's destined for an early retirement. And Yorkshire's Chris Lord grapples unsuccessfully with a jammed-on handbrake in his Mazda. And an unpleasant surprise for Norwegian John Hogland, whose Skoda's front wheel has jammed. The first real disaster is reserved for Citroen and the luckless John Weatherly. An engine malfunction on this very first stage calls for desperate measures. As the seconds tick on, Weatherly feverishly searches for a cure. Can you hold this bonnet up, please? Well, what's the problem, John? Can you tell? Um, it's something electrical, but quite what I don't know. None of the wires seem to be hanging off. Is that rotor okay? Yeah. You spoke to Chris? Yeah, just get the cap back on there. Well, it looks as though it's all going to be in vain. A small bolt securing the camshaft sprocket has sheared after being incorrectly case-hardened. So an otherwise healthy car is sidelined by one tiny component failure. And while one of his more fortunate teammates flashes by, a disappointed John to Ashton Court, Bristol, for the second special stage. As expected, the lead is being disputed by four-wheel drive Audi Quattro's. Their supremacy on gravel forest roads is undisputed, but they're already dominating proceedings on the tarmac stages before the real challenge has even begun. The others can only fight amongst themselves. Bristol, the cars head east to Castle Coombe racing circuit. Mikola leads the pack. American John Buffum is on his annual rally outing to Europe in his Audi Quattro. Vartanen flings his Rothmans Opel Manta around in entertaining style. As does Russell Brooks, who's developed a good eye for cone crushing. Another visitor to Britain is American John Woodner. He's taking the great circle route as the Lombard RAC rally gets into its stride. After a special stage around Cologne Airfield, the last test of the day is back at Longleat. And with fastest time here, Blomqvist tweezes into a four-second lead ahead of Mikola. Fastest of the conventional two-wheel drive brigade, the mercurial Henry Toivonen. His teammate Vartanen has been suffering a recurrent problem of sticking brakes. There's no holding a rampant Stig Blomqvist. On Sunday morning at Butley Safari Park, he's fastest yet again, powering his 360 horsepower Audi over the twisty 2.7 mile test in just three minutes, 16 seconds. Undaunted by the Quattro stranglehold, Teumannen gives a typically uninhibited display of driving to finish the test only six seconds slower than Blomqvist. national champion Dallal Wiedner in his fire-splitting Audi Quattro is pacing himself carefully on his first major international outing. John Hogland Skoda pauses for a celebration pirouette the audience is suitably appreciative. And 
So to the heart of the Midlands, Birmingham's Sutton Park. McRae is eighth, well placed for the forest action to come. And the 350 horsepower Toyotas are all running well. This is Yuha Kankunen. Malcolm Wilson's Ford Escort is contesting the Group A class. And at Western Park, Blomqvist is fastest yet again. Despite the treacherously slippery asphalt, Teubelen is only three seconds slower. But Voldegaard, sixth after the first day, is proving that the powerful Toyota Celica Turbo is highly competitive. He's moving up fast. After a modest start, Brooks, who has a splendid RAC rally record, is getting down to business. No prizes for guessing who's fastest at Trenton Gardens. But Teubelen is still very much in touch with the Audis. Disaster for Mikola at Nosley Safari Park. He's cut a corner a fraction too fine, hit a tree stump and collapsed a front strut. The Quattro appears to be almost immobile despite a gathering crowd's efforts. The anticipated battle for the lead suddenly seems a distant memory. To finish this stage, the offending wheel will have to be removed. Mikola gets down to work with the wheel brace while co-driver Arnie Hertz brings out the jack. Already over two minutes have ticked remorselessly by. Only the enormous experience of these two professionals prevents panic setting in. Once the wheel is removed, Arnie Hertz leaps onto the diagonally opposite corner of the car in an effort to reduce pressure on the broken suspension and increase traction at the rear. some grip is found, but over five minutes have passed. Arnie Hertz clings on grimly as Mikola drives to the end of the special stage. Michel Mouton's Audi moves up to second. And Voldegaard continues to charge. He's fourth fastest here. Just beaten by McRae's Opel Mantle. Despite Terry Cabey's attempts to generate interest and excitement, some of the spectators at Nosley are far more interested in their lunch. How, how much time have you lost being able to calculate? Uh, five and a half minutes. But we, we got out. In a... Yes, you got out. Yes. At the service point after the Nosley Safari Park stage, Audi mechanics replace the front wheel suspension. But Hannah has dropped to 26th place. So, how are you looking forward to the prospect of driving now then? Oh, it's not first time we have dropped down, so. <laughs> so, so let's see. Darkness falls over Yorkshire. The headlamps of countless cars crisscross the moors as a numbing cold grips the rally for the first time. Just north of Harrogate, the action really begins, under a hunter's moon. At dawn at Hoyk in Scotland, Blomqvist still leads, but a fierce night of hard forest rallying has taken its toll. As a result of an accident in Dolby Forest, his Audi looks to be in a sorry state.
Zwig is not a happy man, especially as the German mechanics don't seem to be terribly interested in his problem. Every major team has experienced a night of setbacks. In the Toyota camp, Eklund has retired, but Waldegard has stormed through to hold a superb second place. What happened during the night, Bjorn? Uh, the most surprising thing is we have seen Kilder as, as nice as it ever had been before. It was a clear night and the uh, frozen roads, beautiful. Beautiful for Bjorn, perhaps, but the Opel team's two Finnish drivers have both been off the road, along with Kankonen and Antero Liner. It was sort of crest and 60 meters and 90 right, and there was no advantage. Uh, arrow and so we didn't have time to break. Were you all three off at the same time then? Yeah, we were in the, in the row, like uh, queuing on the traffic light. It was very good up until the Kilders Forest where we had a puncture and had to drive about six miles in a puncture, dropped about a minute and a half and maybe two places. So, uh, but other than that, we've had no problems. So where were you then before that then? What, what position? We were actually lying either third or fourth at that point, but we've dropped back now to, we're not sure whether it's fifth or sixth. Craig Forest in the Scottish border country. Bone dry and dusty. The road surface frozen rock hard after a sub-zero night. This is classic RAC rally territory. Vandergaard is continuing a fine drive for Toyota following his recent victory in Africa on the Ivory Coast Rally. But Russell Brooks has stormed through the vast expanses of Kilder Forest overnight and has clawed his way up to fourth place. On his home territory, McRae is fighting to regain fourth place following a puncture as the cars reach Lowther Leisure Park near Penrith. From 26th position, Mikola has fought back magnificently. He's just passed Bjorn Valdegard and is now restored to an astonishing second place, albeit nearly eight minutes behind the leader, Stig Blomqvist, who's having no difficulty whatsoever in maintaining his lead. Valdegard hangs on grimly, hoping to stay in touch with the Quattros. And following his traffic problems in Slaley Forest, Henry Teubenen is also fighting to regain a place in the top three. Brooks is now engaged in a personal battle with McRae. British honor is at stake. At Lowther Castle Leisure Park, he is only five seconds slower than the Audi, but the Scot beats him by two seconds and finishes fourth fastest in the Coombe Forest stage. In Group A, Keller Grundl's Volkswagen Golf GTI calls the tune. The Swede is up to seventh place. Mike Nicholson. Terry Caby and the second Vauxhall Chevette has had problems, but is climbing back up the field. Monday evening, darkness falls over the Lake District. Drysdale Forest, a long 17-mile special stage, is the scene of a final drama before the cars reach Windermere. Please stop, stop. Move back, please. Bjorn Voldegaard's once pristine Toyota lies silent and damaged, a long way off the road. <laughs> yes, that's one of those things. What, 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 how did it happen? Uh, it's, a, it's a difficult corner to start with, and uh, we was understeering too much and just went off. And bad luck, it was a tree stump. We want you in the car. In the car. No, no. Off the road. Car. Left it that way. As spectators struggle to restore the Salika to the road above them, so crews head towards a welcome night's rest in Windermere. The order is Blomqvist, Mikola, Brooks and McRae. The Grisdale stage, we, we tried a new type of tyre, you know, to safeguard punctures and the tyre wasn't really as good as what we had been using, so we dropped some time to Russell there. I think we're now 20 seconds behind Russell. I think our positions have changed something like five times, but of course, uh, the last couple of stages, Grisdale, which were covered in sheet ice, have really changed things because as I understand it, Voldegaard's gone off, Henry Toivonen's blown his engine up, uh, Jimmy had a minor indiscretion, so that leaves us in third place. What have the stages been like today? Very nice, 
very smooth and nice. A little bit icy in the morning, and even now in the evening. That suits your suits you. Yeah, but okay. When you have that lead, you have to be careful as well. So it's not so nice to be driving on those. Ice spots. Right. What's the forecast for tomorrow? Do you know? Is it going to be continue to be icy? I don't know really, but anyway, we are going south, so I hope it should be a little bit warmer. Dawn over Lake Windermere, and back in Grisdale Forest, Blomqvist shatters his previous night's performance with a time over the identical test, which is more than a minute faster. His vice-like grip on this event is quite unshakable. McRae resumes his duel with Russell Brooks, but the Englishman draws further ahead following a puncture on the opal. The gap stretches to 2 minutes 45 seconds. As the rally heads south to Hague Hall on the outskirts of Wigan, Russell Brooks seems secure from attack. In the afternoon sunshine, rallying comes to Alton Park in Cheshire for two laps of the racing circuit. Weather conditions are as unlike a typical RAC rally as anyone can remember. Park to Klokainog Forest and the start of the last grueling night's rallying through Wales. A cloudless sky heralds a bitterly cold night as Keller Grundel's Volkswagen and Mikhail Sundrum's battered Opel Escona continue the scrap for Group A honours. With visits to classic Welsh forest complexes like Penmachno, Dubby, Llanavan and Margam, there's still 15 hours of forest rallying in store before breakfast. Dawn at Swansea and a brief respite. Russell Brooks has been off the road and dropped three places. Can he pull them back? I think the fact that it's now daylight is not, um, it's not so much in our favour because uh, if you stick your neck out, you can gain more time at night. But uh, we'll see what happens. It must have been very demoralising for you, that, Russell, though. We were doing yes, so it well. Yes, was. it was very much so at the time. Um, you know, I know my heart was in driving for a few stages. But uh, these things happen in running, you know. It's a very, very fickle sport. There's an enormous number of ups and downs. Um, you never know what will happen to other people, so you've got to keep trying. Southwest Wales, a brilliantly sunny Wednesday morning, the final sting of the tail. A 60-mile forest loop with long special stages over little-known terrain. Blomqvist remains stoically secure with a vast lead, now stretched to almost 10 minutes. Mikola is equally untroubled in second place. And Brooks' misfortune has left McRae unchallenged in a fine third place. Lassa Lampi's Quattro is fourth. And Brooks himself, fighting back as ever, has now overhauled John Buffum's Quattro to claim a gritty fifth place. Kankanen finishes seventh for Toyota. And 13 years of rallying experience have paid off superbly for Keller Grundle, first in Group A and eighth overall. So Bath salutes its new heroes, Sweden Stig Blomqvist, co-driver Bjorn Sederberg, and the irrepressible Audi Quattro. Stig last won this rally 12 years ago in a Saab. Since that time, he's been regarded as the rally exponent of front-wheel drive, a technique he put to brilliant use in the four-wheel drive turbocharged Audi. Today, he's proved that he is at the peak of his powers, blinding speed in the forests, total commitment, sustained aggression, huge reserves of stamina and enormous experience. A worthy winner of the 1983 Lombard RAC Rally.
Well, although the Lombard REC was the last round of the 1983 World Championship, the title, as you know, had been decided before it, with Hannu Mikkola winning his first world crown.